creating a program that minifies your code, replacing variable names, function names, and function parameter names in the same way big players such as Babel, Webpack, Yugify.js, and others do. Generating search maps used to reverse engineer from minified code to the code you actually wrote. And then going to the browser and debugging your code following the specs browser can understand to debug code and even check out the variable names on your debugging mode. This is what you're gonna do today and learn the sorcery behind one of the most important techniques for web developers. Let's do this! <laughs> Have you wondered how you can debug TypeScript applications in the browser while browsers only understand JavaScript? What about reproducing what Webpack, Uglify.js, and other magic packages do behind the scenes to compress your code and transform 10 kilobytes of text into just a few bytes? Today, you're gonna use one of the most advanced concepts for programming languages. You are gonna learn about abstract syntax tree concepts, a technique that reads your code as a string and maps it into instructions, such as variable definitions, function statements, and much more. This is how TypeScript transpire code to JavaScript, how Uglify.js or Webpack minify code, or even how Angular can migrate your code from one version to another without you having to refactor all code base by yourself. My friends, this is really powerful, and this video is the first content on the internet teaching you how to create a program that minifies and generates source maps that browsers can understand so you can debug the code you wrote whereas browsers are actually loading the minified code. This way you can replace code without having to handle strings by hand. By the end of this video, you have the knowledge and confidence to discuss bundling process by doing it from scratch. Alrighty, grab a drink and let's begin. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and leave your thumbs up. This helps a lot with the work I've been doing here. Thank you for choosing to watch my video. Let's do this. As this is the first content out there, remember to share it with your colleagues and discuss with them the magic we'll be doing today. I've been asking myself how popular tools do such magic. This is what I like most about being a soft engineer, being curious and reproducing text from scratch to learn and to be able to troubleshoot problems in those libraries if needed. In this channel, I've recreated Node.js from scratch using the same components used in the original product. I've re-implemented the WebSocket protocol using only JavaScript with no frameworks or libraries and I plan to do a lot more. Hey you, leave a comment now on what should I try recreating next. In this video, I'm gonna show you a deep dive content reproducing the sorcery behind Angular, TypeScript, Webpack, and other packages. I'm gonna give you a brief explanation of how I was able to come up with this solution and what struggles I had. If you wanna jump directly where I start coding the project, just click in the chapter below and jump exactly where you want to. I'm part of the TC39 Educators Outreach. TC39 is the committee behind the JavaScript language and monthly they show us what's new and what our thoughts about it. TC39 is working on the source map proposals so browsers can use the same spec to help you debug minified code or transpile code. I didn't really understand what's the idea so I decided to recreate it from scratch to understand how source map tools work. When you use TypeScript or Babel, for example, they transpile code that is optimized to run on browsers or in older Node.js versions. Imagine your code. It's just a text that is gonna be interpreted by JavaScript runtimes such as Chrome or Firefox browsers, Node.js, Dino, and etc. Your code will have long variable names, function names, and etc. When you have a bunch of assets, this could slow down the speed of download files in a web page. When working on web apps, you usually want to reduce the size of the assets your users would download. So the technique is to change those variable names to smaller length and remove all spaces, comments, and clear line breaks. Then you'd use Webpack, Uglify.js, or other tools to do this transformation for you. The code that the browser will actually load looks like this. The info function was renamed by the letter D. The letter A renamed the sum function and all other statements were shortened. All spaces and line breaks were removed and it saved 
50 bytes on a file that contains about 300 characters. This is a very small file, but libraries such as React, Angular, and etc. could have thousands of lines. So minifying code is mandatory for avoiding slowing down applications. Now you've reduced the size and published your app so anyone can use it. For some reason, the app is off in production. When you go to the browser's inspector and try clicking to check the error, you notice that E is not a function. What the hell is E? It's hard to guess because you've never written this function name. That's where search maps take place. Using a search map file, it maps references from the minified code to the original source. From the search map file, browsers can understand and map references from minified code to the actual source code. So you can inspect and check which function wasn't defined and look at the detail on the actual source code you wrote. You can fix all the issues, generate new source maps and minify source code and go back to the browser. Updating the browser, you can see that the minified code is still there and everything is working as planned. You can check now there is an index.js file that contains all the original source code. Notice that now you are able to debug your code and put breakpoints. Then restarting the browser, you can debug step by step your program and validate what's happening there. Then you can also watch variables step by step and run commands in the browser menu using them as if they were running in the browser. One cool thing here is that the debugger goes last to the mean file code, which means it's actually executing it from there and not from the original source code. Now you understood how source maps work and how powerful they are for troubleshooting applications. It's time to write your own generator from scratch. By default, I asked ChatGPT any questions about software programming and it's been really powerful. I've spent eight hours or more asking for ideas, refactoring code, asking for improvements and much more. This could have been weeks doing all by myself. So I'm falling in love with how powerful are those APIs now. If you look at my ChatGPT history from yesterday, you're gonna see it's a long chat. I've asked since what is a minify tool, how the popular ones work, and how I would create my first experiment. If you are not so specific, ChatGPT will return answers and code that are not so efficient and doesn't work well. This print represents the first version I came up with ChatGPT for minifying the code. I know this print has a lot of information and probably is a bit small for you. I'm gonna tell you for now, it's a bit irrelevant. I'm just wanna point out the approach I followed in the beginning and how I changed everything later. ChatGPT suggested I read my file as a string and try replacing keywords using regex, such as get the text after the const, var, or let instruction, or get everything inside that function, and so on. The problem was, if I define a variable named profession and have a text containing the same name on it, I replace the text and generate run results. What I needed was to replace a variable in all places it's being used. So using replace and rejects, I wasn't getting good results. A few weeks ago, I was in Brussels speaking at a conference and I was chatting with another speaker about how Node.js test runner is faster than Jest. He was really happy about it but he said it's too much effort to refactor a project to start using it. He pointed out that I could write a tool that would understand JS instructions and generate code for using the Node.js test runner. And that this is how Angular does when it has a breaking change and users want to use the new APIs without having to refactor and waste time on it. Researching a bit, I ended up on ChatGPT suggesting I use libraries that could map a JavaScript file into an abstract syntax tree. Going back to the example I've shown before, we have two blocks containing function calls, variable values, and much more. If you map this code into an abstract syntax string, you're gonna see this object that maps instances from the JavaScript code into how the JavaScript language is being interpreted. Analyzing the JavaScript syntactic tree, I can filter for variables, functions, and where they are being used 
without having to handle tax. This is really what I wanted while trying to replace tax myself. With this object, everything was easier to handle and generate code. In summary, the AST is just a detailed mapping of a plain text code mapped into instances. Don't feel bad if those keywords are new to you. Usually only people working on TypeScript, Babel or other transpiles or code generators know it. So it's very rare to see content out there about it. Going back to ChatGPT, I asked it to change approaches and try using the abstract syntax tree approach. And I finally got my first program working. As you saw, my chat history with ChatGPT was huge. That's because even ChatGPT was struggling to make it work. So I had to go back and forth, suggesting changes until I make it work. Eight hours later, pair programming with ChatGPT, I was able to come up with a reusable and maintainable code. My friend, I've been through a lot of other problems to make my minified and source map generator work. I almost gave up a bunch of times, but I'm very persistent and hopefully I was able to abstract all complexity for you so you can have an easier path than I had. Are you ready to dive into with me? Just a quick break before we jump to the demo. I recreated Node.js from scratch and it was pretty complex to finally make it work. I've abstracted all complexity and even created a cloud coding environment to help you. So I released an ebook and it's the first content on the internet showing you how to understand what's behind the scenes of Node.js car. There, you will make your own Node.js runtime version from scratch and I will show you the relationship between the Chrome V8 engine, LibUV and the C++ bridge. This will help you understand and troubleshoot current problems that your Node.js applications might have such as bottlenecks, performance and much more. Check the page in the video description to learn more about it. Also, follow me on Instagram, Twitter and LinkedIn and check out my website where I gather all the training courses I've launched. There's a lot of content that can help you and of course, many free content for you. Okay, you understood what source maps are, why we minify code and what's the approach I'm gonna show you today. It's crazy that you are gonna actually analyze the JavaScript syntax, make names shorter, remove all line breaks and spaces, and make it comparable with most browsers. This is really mad science, my friends. <laughs> I'll be using the current Node.js LTS, the version 18, and you should use the same version as me so you won't face any unexpected environmental problems there. Enough talking, right? Let's check this out in practice. All right, so as usual, I'm using Node.js here. Now I'm using the LTS, the V18, okay? So I like using NVM. So if you don't use NVM, it helps a lot to manage versions. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna save this version on an NVM RC file. So here I have the file. So if you're gonna go on the future, we're gonna just run NVM, oops. NVM use and it's gonna find this NVM RC and use the same version as me. Okay, I'm gonna initialize this project and I'm gonna write here put type module. So we're gonna use all ECMAScript modules and just to ensure the versions, I'm gonna use node 18. Okay. Perfect. I'm going to start creating the, the whole structure for this project. So I'm going to create the SRC file. Uh, I'm going to divide all the responsibilities. So we're going to have a file for minifying code. We're going to have another file to generate source maps. And we're going to have a processor, which we'll call both of them. Okay. Well, before we do that, I'm going to create a public folder and I'm gonna create the index.js file that's gonna be uh, minified on our project, okay? So let's create very simple code for now. So I'm gonna create a sun. I'm using here GitHub Copilot. So we're gonna see that it's gonna help us a lot. So var1, var1, var2. And also I'm gonna create a function info. We're gonna receive a name. Um, I'm going to create some variables here that it's going to be uh, modified. So some it's going to be like 10 and 18. I'm going to have profession, soft engineer, and I'm going to have the message. 
So hello, my name is Tanana. You are 10 years old and you are a professional software engineer in this case. And then I'm gonna have a console.log with the message and I'm gonna call it info with my name. Just make sure this code works. So on public and run this code, okay? This is gonna be the code we're gonna magnify and you're gonna see everything working and also generating source codes for that. Nice. So on the source, we're gonna have the minifier. We're gonna have, I'm gonna just create this structure here, export default class minifier. And also I'm gonna create here the processor, okay? The processor, I'm gonna have a static run function, okay? So, oops, here is actually the processor. All right. So, I think we're gonna send the path, right? Where is the file we wanna uh, minify? So, file name, and then from our source, actually from the, the, the path here, actually could be inside the source, right? Index.js which will import processor. Just remember to put .js and we're gonna get the parameters from the command line. So run process.arg. All right. I'm gonna put right in the end a console.log minify code and source map generated with success and let's put the file name here perfect so imagine that we're gonna generate those files in the public right the public folder so let's create some scripts here to make our lives easier so first i'm gonna create a clean a clear function that's gonna remove all index.min file and then I'm gonna create the minify, okay? All the time, we're gonna remove the file that we have there, and then we're gonna generate the new ones. So to minify, I'm gonna first run clear, and I think clean is better, right? Clean. And I'm gonna run src index.js, and I'm gonna send the file name, okay? The file name is on public index.js. Nice. And once we have it running, so minify and run, and I'm gonna put here the start. So start is gonna run node public dot index js. Okay, so the minify and run, it's gonna run npm minify and npm start. Okay. This is when we will have the min.js file, all right? Nice. You can put your name here also, your GitHub username. Perfect. Well, we can notice that we have a lot of scripts here, right? So I'm going to show you a very cool tool to help you handling a bunch of scripts from there. So install NTL, and then if I type NTL, it's gonna show all the scripts we have on the package JSON file. I'm gonna choose minify, and then we can see it running, right? But if you just type nt, it's gonna run the last command you chose. So I run nt, you can see exactly the same thing. So we are grabbing the public index.js file. It's all set for now. You can close this file. You can close the index from public. Okay, we're gonna work with uh, abstract syntax tree, right? We're gonna analyze the whole JavaScript tree. So uh, on the minifier, I'm gonna just create a function here to get the minified code, right? So I would say minify code and return map names. I'm gonna tell you why just uh, in a bit, okay? Perfect. So this function is gonna 
get the original code and do all the magic behind it, okay? Perfect. Let's jump back to the processor, okay? Because it's our entry point. And the first thing we're gonna do is to read this file as a string, and then we're gonna install a package to analyze and get the metadata from the JavaScript code, okay? So I'm gonna create also a static read file. Oops. I'm gonna actually import first from node fs. And then I'm gonna read this file, okay? So fs read files sync and the file name. So here we're gonna have the original code. Perfect. Well, we're gonna do also something to generate the file in the end, right? We're gonna need the index.min.js. So I'm gonna create here static generate minified file path. And I'm gonna receive the file name. Let's see if Copilot can help us. Perfect. So const minif minified file path is gonna be our generate from the file name, okay? You can try logging it just to check if the mini filed. Oh, I wrote it, miswrote it. Mini filed file path. Right? Nice. Let's run again. Okay, so it's public index min JS. Nice. This is our target, right? When we finish processing everything, we're gonna jump and send it there. Okay, let me show you how a minify code should be, okay? So, a minify code has all the minified strings and files, and I also have to map where is the dot .map file, which is in the same directory, right? So, we're gonna also send the index.js here, and we should get this without the public, because we're gonna run everything from there, just so you know. So, I'm gonna import from path, and I'm gonna just say that the minify local file path is gonna be the base name of our file path. Now, the only thing is that this file doesn't contain public on the name, okay? So it's just index.js, nice. We're gonna use it later, but I'm just gonna keep it here. I'm gonna create a function to generate the minified code. So generate minified code. Okay, so to generate this file, I'm gonna need the original code, I'm gonna need the minified file path, and also the minified, lo minified local path. Nice, what else? Well, we're gonna import first the minifier, okay? So if I type here minifier and tab, we're gonna see the auto import is working. Minifier.js, and I'm gonna initialize. Minifier equals new minifier. And then I'm gonna call the function from the minifier, okay? Minifier dot minify and return map names, okay? Just it, just it for now. Perfect, now we can jump to the minifier code and start working on that. To make these things work, we're gonna need two different packages. Let's go to Google. So we need Acorn NPM, okay? So this is gonna help us to generate the syntax tree from our code, okay? And then we're gonna also need the ES code gen. The ES code gen, we're gonna use to minify, actually to remove spaces, to remove break lines and comments, and also validate that our code, the string we generated in the end, is valid, okay? So let's jump to the code and let's install them. So I'm gonna install Acorn in the version 8.8.2, .8 and now so we're gonna need ES code gen, code gen in the version 2.0.0. Okay, I'm gonna comment right there. What are they doing? So import as a corn. So a corn generates AST, 
and then we're gonna have our ES code gen perfect so ES code gen validates JS code and remove comments and line breaks nice now what I'm gonna do we're gonna use the const original EST it's gonna be acorn.parse and we're gonna use ECMAScript version 2022 and locations true so we're gonna parse it in a JSON object and we're gonna see all where the code is located so let's just print out this json.stringfy and see it in practice Ooh, it's not working i think i didn't call this minify we forgot calling this this one right so this i'm gonna just break some lines here and save it let's see Ooh, we got an error must be instance of a class i forgot to put static nice so i'm gonna copy all this object we return to explain you what we're gonna do okay let's copy them all and put here so what's happening here see we have all the mappings where are the functions so let's see here this function declaration starts on the line one in column zero okay so if you go to the let's see if i can move right here okay index so zero one is just here right so the function starts here we have an identifier so what is the identifier in this case is the column nine so if you go here and you go right on the bottom you can see line one and column nine so we can see that it's the end of the function which the name of the function is sun well what else we have an identifier var one which is this one on the same line and on the block 17 so 17 it's on 18 but probably it's because are doing some magic behind the scenes and you can follow the same idea you can see the variable declarator uh, identifier so the message is located on line 8 so line 8 is here in column 17 so one, one trick here is you can click either control or command p you can type this signal you can put the line so line there is 8 and the column so the column is gonna be 10 and then you can just jump where this code is so we can see the message here okay we're gonna use this object a lot from now on to check if our parsing and everything is okay so what we're gonna do here first we're gonna traverse this whole object we're gonna move uh, recursively on all those objects and we're gonna switch or we're gonna replace those names by the alphabet letters okay so message probably is gonna be called a uh, other variable that we might have here age is gonna be called B and so on okay nice well I'm gonna show you also that we can use the ES code to generate our final code okay see that uh, copilot is just sharing some ideas here also so I can just console.log the minified code and check out what is the result and see it's not minifying right because we have the names exactly the same names but we don't have spaces we don't have line breaks and so on so our deal today is we're gonna replace those names make them shorter and then generate the final file nice all right what i'm gonna do here for all the names we've changed i'm gonna store them on an object so we can see what was the location so we can move back and forth from the minifier code to the original code okay so here i'm gonna call name map equals new map okay and then i'm gonna use all the magic of uh, uh github copilot here to help us see how amazing is this 
I'm gonna create here alphabet. So it just generated the whole alphabet for me, right? Oh, I want I want this content alphabet. So we have both alphabets, which is gonna be our tokens, right? So a function might be called a another variable called b and so on and so forth so i'm gonna transform this in an array so we can as we are using we are gonna be removing those letters so we won't repeat any letter nice we have the alphabet there we have the array so i'm gonna create first a function to generate names if it doesn't exist okay so let's create a private function generate name if not existing okay so first if this name is actually if the name is already there i'm gonna just return it haha <laughs> copilot is amazing isn't it otherwise i'm gonna just generate a new name but how i'm gonna generate the name this function doesn't exist right but before generating the name, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna check first if the alphabet wasn't completed, okay? So if the alphabet is empty, I'm gonna show just an error. So limit is how many letters we have here. We have uh, 52 tokens, okay? 52 tokens. What else? Well, we can use shift, but I'm gonna just return it right away. This alphabet.shift. Actually, I'm gonna put this just in a variable, okay? And return your name, so we can test if this is working as expected. So if the name wasn't there, let's just set it out. Name map set and we're gonna set with this new name okay so what if i try creating names let's see the console.log let's call probably create users create users probably create select i don't know just thinking okay uh, what if i try using two times so what i expect from here when I'm generating this name, it's going to be saving this on our map, okay? And then it's going to return the first letter. So in the first case, we should see A, and in, in first select, we should see B. The second time we are executing, this already exists on the, on the map, and then will not replace, okay? So I'm going to save it and run again. And now you can see, create users A, create users A, select B, and so on and so forth. Hehehe, <laughs> very nice. Okay, but here I just want to generate the file. I'm going to control how I update this code from some, somewhere else. Okay, going, going back to the, the JSON we got from the AST, right? Uh, every object we have here, we, sh we call them declarations, right? So we have an array of declarations here. So I have a function declaration and inside the function, I have other objects. I have another declaration here for the identifier and I have params, which has another identifiers, which are also declarations. So I'm gonna create a function here called handle declarations in singular, right? Because it's gonna be recursive. So this is going to be declaration, just to make it sure we, we know what's going on here. Oh, Copilot is suggesting a lot of things here. Well, first of all, I'm going to get the old name, okay? Because we're going to change the name. So from the declaration name, we're going to have the name. And you can notice here all the variables and all the functions, they have this property name. This is what is our target, right? This is what we're gonna change. So we have the declaration name and I'm gonna generate a new name, right? Ooh, Copilot is helping a lot. Nice, so it's suggested if we generate a name, if we generate the name, we can generate and update our map. This is exactly what I'm gonna do, okay? But I'm gonna create a new function to update our map. 
So update the map. Uh, actually, I'm only gonna update it if needed. Okay. So if name map has the name. So if it has the name, I'm gonna grab the name. So cause name map is gonna be name map. And then I'm gonna set some positions. If you're gonna look here, you're gonna see that each declaration has the LOC, which is the line of code, right? Where is the, the location on this, on our code, as we were saying. The only thing we need here is the start, okay? So we're gonna grab LOC in start, and I'm gonna save all the start object in the map. So name map positions dot push and we actually we have to receive this data also right so it's gonna be loc and inside it we have start <laughs> we just broke everything because we didn't close brackets right yes all right handle declaration actually this should be here okay nice so we're gonna store only the start value which which contains line and column and then I'm gonna push only start and I have to update this data right so this name map dot set to update it and early return we don't need to use else otherwise we can save the old name we can pass through the new name and the positions, right? So now we know how it was before and which one is the new name, okay? And where this is located, where the original one is located, okay? Nice. So now we can call the update, passing all the, the, the things here, and as GitHub <laughs> Copilot is suggesting to us, we can update this declaration name, okay? So let's check this out if it's working in practice. So I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna call the handle declaration passing the original EST, right? Uh, no, let's actually use the update name map. No, we can use it, but we, we won't send the, the, the full original EST. We have everything here, probably we're gonna look for body, right? So body, the first position, and then we can get the ID here, probably, so we can change some, okay? So dot ID. So when we do this, we are handling the declaration, the ID has a name, right? And this name is gonna be changed by our code. So what do we expect now? If I print the JSON string fly on our AST, let's see what we have there. I'm gonna copy everything and paste it on our visualizer here. Okay, so now probably sun was changed. Nice, isn't it? So now we are changing the whole structure and then we can generate code from this structure. Perfect, 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 perfect. So handle declaration, it's okay. Well, as we're gonna need to handle AST from both minifying code and generating source code, I'm gonna create a helper class to make this process easier, okay? So I'm gonna go and create the AST helper. So export the full class AST helper. And I'm gonna use a very good uh, uh, design pattern here, which is the Fluent API. So we're gonna set all the configurations and then we're gonna have a method to just execute it, okay? Well, let's take a look on the, on the code here, what we're gonna look for, okay? Well, we have a lot of types here that we can use, okay? We have binary expression and a lot of things. But I'm gonna use only function declaration, okay? I'm gonna also use identifiers. The identifiers are actually where the code is being used, so we, we won't have anything. And the variable declaration. So if I, I search here, we can have a lot of, we have three variable declarations, right? 
So if we see here, we have only three variables, exactly what we need. Nice, nice, nice. So I'm going to create a function for configuring all those functions. So every time we see this in the code, we're going to execute a function. So set variable declaration, I'm going to call hook because it's going to be triggered only when we find this data. So I'm going to receive a function and then I'm going to save right here. This is so amazing about Copilot, right? So equals a function. Now I think Copilot is going to do for all those functions. Let's see. Handle variable declaration on set, function declaration hook, function declaration hook, identifier, identifier, amazing, isn't it? But I forgot to return this. So we can call this in a, in a call chain, right? I'm going to create those variables also here. This is so my God, <laughs> GitHub Copilot is amazing, isn't it? So I'm storing all those functions and then I'm going to use them in another function. So here I'm going to call it traverse and I'm going to use the AST, right? The goal now is I'm going to go through all the nodes we can see on our data, right? All the dependencies here, all the tree, and try finding those types. Perfect. So we have the handlers here, right? What we're gonna use, so cons handlers, it's gonna be all of them. I think, let's see. Yes. This is so amazing. My God, I can get used to it. Perfect. We have all the handlers here. We are mapping all this. I'm going to just come in here where the reference is being used. Okay. Uh, I think it's missing just a break. It's here. Nice. Now I have the handlers, I have just to call those functions, right? Depending on what I received from the AST, I'm gonna receive and handle this data. All right, I'm gonna call this node, just so you understand that could be these pieces of objects, right? So these are the nodes. Well, now we have the handlers, we can try calling them with the node and type, right? But this node could also be undefined. So I'll use all optional chaining here because if it just go to, let's say, variable declarator and we try executing some function that we didn't put here, it's going to crash, right? So we are using a hash map structure here to make it, it very, very straightforward. Now I'm going to go through all these objects and I'm going to call recursively this function. So I'm going to go through all the keys. So const key in node. And let's see if suggests something. Ooh, so ugly. No, 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 no. If type of of the node on key is not an object, I'm going to just continue. Always, we do always a uh, early return, early abort, early continue. With it, we can just call it recursively. So this transverse, oops, and use this. So it's going to call recursively, right? So we are using a node for each key that is an object. We're going to go through them and consume it. So when we are consuming, we are executing a function that was previously configured that we're going to do now from the minifier side. OK, from here, it's all fine. Let's import the EST helper. Remember to put JS in the end. And then I'm going to create here a function called Traverse. OK, here we're going to use the original AST could be node as well, right? I think node is, it's going to be easier to understand. We're going to initialize first the AST helper, and then we're going to start configuring all those hooks, right? All those functions. So I'm going to use AST helper, 
set variable declaration hook so it's not the, the declaration here we're gonna actually do something smarter for variable declarations I'm gonna use const declaration of node declarations and call our function could be a for each as well but I think this is not so relevant right but see we have to use dot ID right because here if you look at the data they are IDs let's see ID okay the ID contains the node perfect we're gonna do for all other hooks as well oops in the minifier so function declaration we're gonna do the same for the the declaration itself and we have to do also for the parameters okay so for const param of node params and we call it as we've done before i love github copilot my god this saves a lot of time i'm gonna do the same thing for the identifier hook but for the identifier i'm gonna do something different right i'm not doing the handle declaration as we've done before here i'm gonna save keep the old name and then I'm gonna try updating from here okay because this could be tail call that we had there so we're gonna get the new name that we saved right so we are saving the new name here so let's grab this new name actually I'm not generating this I'm getting from uh, name app dot new name actually this this could be like this right let's close this just to avoid conflicts okay once we have the new name we're gonna check actually I cannot destructure this because this could be empty this time so I'm gonna grab the new name if returns undefined right and if the name is not defined I'm gonna just return early return always okay otherwise I set the no name and I have to update our map so this update name map with the old name the new name and the node Ooh, will this work so we are configuring all those functions and now we have just to call the traverse with the node all right let's see if it works in practice right now we want to see the final code using the alphabets right so this traverse with the original AST and something that is not so good that we are doing here is that we are mutating objects right but it's not a very good practice but this is just an experiment just a class for you okay so let's print out this AST original AST and see how it goes Ooh, we have an error push is not defined so positions positions oh I pass push here right it's actually the they start start <laughs> yeah we cannot trust this 100% I'm gonna run again Ooh, let's copy this and let's check how the abstract syntax tree is now copy this and paste there so function declaration Ooh, name a identifier name b and name c oh very nice my friend so half of the path we are already there right so we just want to save this file in the disk and check if this is going right as we expect the cool thing is we could see that as the ES code gen was applying or was actually running on our original EST we can assume that the JavaScript side is all right so I'm gonna remove this and I'm gonna return to the processor because it's not the responsibility of this class to save files or to handle file system so I'm gonna return the mini file code and the name map 
okay? The name map is gonna be used when we want to do the opposite process, to map things from the minifier code to the original one. Save this one, go to the processor now. Now, we have uh, here, we have the code and map names, right? So we're gonna grab it, it's, what's the name, minify code and name map. Let me show you again how a, a minifying code should look like. Here we have the JavaScript code, right? And we have to add this tag to tell the browser that the mappings are in the same folder, right? So the browser is gonna download it right away. We don't need even to reference this on a web page. So we're gonna have to add this as well. So const source map URL Ooh, very nice, isn't it? So Copilot just generated the whole thing for me. And now what we have to do is to save it on our file system, right? So fs, write file sync. And then we save, where is the path? So this mini file, file path is gonna be on public, right? The mini file code and our source map URL. And see, we have a break line here, because we need to put on the end of the file. If you put on the beginning of the file, all the mappings in all positions will be wrong, right? They are not gonna work as we expect. Nice, so this is working. Let's check this out. I'm gonna save it and run. Well, oh my God, we see a new file here. And if you go there, you're gonna check that all the code is minified so function a d f but i'm not sure if this is working right if you go to the package json we already created the minify and run so let's run this minify and run and this is going to execute the javascript code so this exactly what i wanted to do just one test here for you when you are trying to do this replacing variables by strings and so on not using the ast you might find this problem. I told you in the beginning of the video, but I'm gonna show you again. If I had here the variable profession and the name profession. So what's the problem when you try to replace the strings? You're gonna try finding every place this uh, word repeats, right? So you're gonna replace the variable and its content. When we are using AST, you're gonna see that there's no problem. You're gonna see this is not a problem. Let's check there you're gonna see G profession because we are changing the language. We are changing the whole structure of the interpreter to get these mappings. It's amazing, isn't it? This is very powerful. We generated the file and let's see how the browsers will work with that. So on public folder, let's create an index.html and use Emmet for HTML5. I'm gonna use Minifying engineering source code with EW. <laughs> nice. So I'm gonna tell here like to user to just check out the, the the developer tools, right? Check out the developer the browser inspector to see the minified source code and to debug the original source code, ooh, uh, and to debug the source code, check out the source code. No, this is this is okay. This is okay. and to debug this to debug code as if it was let me break the line not minified. Yeah, this is what I want. Okay, so when we are trying to debug in the end of this class. We're gonna debug as if it was from the original file, not from the minified one. Okay, I'm gonna save it. You can drag this file and drop on a browser. And then we can see the messages here. And if you go to the console, let me update it again. Nothing happened because we haven't, uh, uh, we haven't referenced our JavaScript file, right? So I'm gonna, write the script src and it's gonna be the minified one right i'm gonna save it and update the browser let me just put some zoom here and you can see everything i just updated here i think i had some uh, uh breakpoints there but 
you're gonna see it's working fine, right? We can see the console here, but we have a source map error. Remember I told you, because we put the source map URL on the minifying code, the browser will try to get this to download on behind the scenes while you're debugging, okay? If I go there and remove this tag, I'm gonna remove this tag from here, you're gonna see, I'm not sure this breakpoints, where, where is it? Let's see. I'm not sure if I can clean up our breakpoints here, but <laughs> I don't know why it's on this breakpoint. Pause on breakpoints, I don't know, probably some tasks. But here we have a problem, right? We have E, we have F, and if you try moving on, you're gonna see that those variables, they are changing, right? We can see E, F, G, and 8. This is what I told you that source maps will help you with, okay? So let's do now the source maps generator. I want to invite you to check out my Mastering Node.js Streams training course. It's also the most complete training showing the Node.js most powerful feature to process large amounts of data. Just a matter of fact, in this course, I teach you how you can consume 30 gigabytes of data in the front end without any back end behind it. All examples are showing using almost zero libraries or frameworks. I teach web streams and Node.js streams and I put a complete project in the end for you to practice even more what you've learned there. Give it a shot, the link is here in the description. Also, send it to your friends that I'm sure they would love it. All right, let's go to our code and generate source maps. All right, if you go to this link I put here in the video description, we have the Google Chrome blog telling us what are search maps, what is the proposal, and how TC39 is working now, so, okay? If you move down, you're gonna see how a search maps should look like, okay? So here we can see that search maps uses uh, the VL key base 64 base encode string to map lines and locations. So you're gonna see a bunch of these weird letters, okay? Because they get a lot of JSON and trying compressing and generating hashes. So this is gonna be very small, okay? Also, we're gonna need where is the original object? What is the original content? I don't know why they have both, right? Because they could load from here but probably it's just a fallback. We have the names. How are the names now, right? Our names came from Sam to A. So we're gonna have all those letters here and we should tell what is the uh, uh, minified version, okay? Something nice here is that we have some visualization tools to check out if our map file is okay. So in the end of this class, we're gonna check this out, okay? Let's jump back to our amazing code. Okay, I'm gonna close this. And now we're gonna work on source maps. We're gonna do the, exactly the same idea we did for minifying the code. We should analyze the EST from the minified code, identify all the functions and names, and save an object. And now we're gonna store those uh, 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 origins and everything now we have from the updated tree, okay? so we can go and do the reverse engineering on this. Well, if you go to the package lock JSON, you're gonna see this dependence, source map, okay? Source map is a dependency for ES code gen. I don't like referencing packages that I haven't installed, right? So we're gonna need this package, so I'm gonna install it just to have it on our package JSON dependencies file, okay? So I'm gonna install the same version that we have there, the source map, and it's gonna be 074. This is a package from Mozilla, it's pretty nice. If you wanna take a look at it, you can go there and go to the NPM. Here I have the, the docs. So there they are teaching you how to do, it's very complex, this API, but hopefully you won't have to face anything like this, okay? This package, it's gonna be useful for us, for us to avoid having to generate this hash, okay? Otherwise we will have to, to write the algorithm to encode those strings. We won't do this. We're gonna just prepare where are the positions, where are the names and files, and then we can bundle it and generate our file. Okay, 
All right. So now we have this source map and we can move on. Same thing we did for the minifier. I'm going to do for our source mapper. So I'm going to export the full class source mapper and I'm going to import those libraries. So I'm going to import from source map the source map generator. Okay. And we're going to need the acorn and ES generator as we've done for the minifier process. Okay. So import as acorn and import ES code gen from ES code gen. And probably we're going to need the EST helper as well. Nice. Well, here I'm going to have a function to generate those source maps. So it's going to be generate source map. Okay. So what we're going to need here, we're going to need the original code, the minified code and the name map that contains all the positions from the original code. Okay. So I'm going to put here original code. <laughs> it seems like copilot is listening to me, right? Oh my God. This is so scary. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go to the processor. I'm also going to get on the constructor where this file should be stored, right? So the file should be stored on public, right? But remember that index is, let me control Z here, is referencing the map without the public, right? Because this is running from this folder. We're going to do the same thing. When the source map file is going to reference to some index or index minify JS, we're going to do exactly the same thing. So here on the constructor, we're going to have the minified local file path. And then I'm going to store it, but I'm going to store it as a private field. So I'm going to just put it here. And we can initialize our source code, our source map. So source map, it's going to be new source map generator. And we're going to say which file is this. So it's the mini file local path. Amazing. We're going to have just to declare this. Otherwise, we're going to see an error. And that's it for now. OK, let's call it from the processor so we can see if this is actually working. As we done to the uh, generate minified code, we're going to do also for the source code, OK, for the source map. So, oh, it's auto completing everything. My God, this is so powerful. OK, let's see. Cons source mapper. Perfect. Oh my God, I can get used to it, right? And we can just call as it's <laughs> suggesting to us. This source map is going to generate the full source map file, okay? The contents we have there so we can save in the disk. Exactly the same thing we did here. So I'm going to just put here source maps content. And I'm going to just break some lines here to make it easier to see. Okay, uh, we have to import this. Just make sure it's using JS path here. We are not using. All right. Well, we have the mapper there. We have just to work on this file. I'm going to just run just to make sure we don't have any syntax problem that we probably have. Model module wasn't found. Uh, helper JS, oh, EST helper. Oh, I don't know. It imported wrong. Nice. So everything is still working as we planned, right? Everything is there. Nice. Just make sure you don't have any syntax error so we can move forward. Well, as I've done to the minified code, we're going to parse this uh, minified code to an EST. So const minified AST, it's going to be acorn parse exactly the same we've done before. OK, if you want to take a look at this object, just to make sure. We can run. 
I think we haven't called this generate search maps, have we? No. I have just to call this right after minifying our code. And I'm gonna send all parameters GitHub Copilot is suggesting to us. I'm gonna run. We have a problem, minified content is not defined. Minified code. Yes, we have to get the minified code from here, right? It's returning. Uh, no. So I'm gonna return the minified code and name name map and here are we using it no so const here it's gonna be minified and name map okay both that we're gonna use to generate source maps run again and now it seems we have the same structure that we've seen before right so we have eight we have log and console.log this is super smart right it can understand that console.log is actually a native function so it shouldn't be uh, minified perfect we have the est as we want now we have to go and traverse in the whole nodes right in the whole tree so let's create a private field here traverse in the node right we're gonna call node because we're gonna call recursively exactly the same thing we've done before I think github copilot is gonna help a lot because it learned a lot okay variable declarations yes so we don't have this function yet right we're gonna write this down but I'm gonna just follow and uh, here is okay Let's create the handle declaration so we can store all the positions we can find from variables functions in this map and then we can move forward, okay? Just notice a thing. Now, I want to get exactly the same idea from the other, right? So we're going to go on this object, on the LOC and only the start. So, same idea, handle declaration we're gonna get LOC and from LOC the start object. Now I'm gonna create a new map here, exactly the same idea we, we used before. The minified items, new map. And well, if we have, oh, not the start, it's actually name. Uh, name is gonna be here, yes. If we have this name already there, this means that we just have to store uh, positions, right? So, cause name map, we get the positions, we set the name, and we early return it. And then we close here, and then we just set the name and the positions exactly the same idea i think we, sh we could have created like an abstraction and just reuse this function but i won't pay attention to this for now okay all right we are just storing where the line is we are trying finding there if it doesn't exist we're gonna update it we're gonna create it otherwise we're gonna just update it perfect now we have the handle declaration and we can do exactly the same idea. So I'm going to go there for function. Oh, GitHub Copilot knows everything. My God. So now we are handling the node ID and the function parameters. Same idea of minifying, right? And for the identifier, I'm going to do differently. I'm not going to use the handle declaration because usually what I saw is the identifier is the last thing on the tail, right? So I'm gonna do this manually. So I'm gonna grab the old name, the node.name. I'm gonna grab this old name and do exactly the same. Yeah, we, we could have <laughs> we could avoid repeating a lot of code here, but it's fine, it's fine. And now 
I'm gonna handle declaration. So I'm gonna send all the data we have, update the node, and then we can call traverse. Well, we are going into variables, function declarations, and the context where they are being used. We are just storing these positions on a function, and then we can start using them right away. Now, as we've done before, we could use the traverse, minifying the whole thing, and we can uh, minify this code right away. But no, I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to create a new function and I'm going to call generate source map data. Okay? So for the source map data, I'm going to need the name map and the minified code. I'm going to put it just here. And let's call it and just check if our our minified items are as we expect. So minify uh, minified items dot values. And let's see. I think there is one more. Yeah. Position, yeah, probably JSON string file. All right, we have positions, we have an array. For each array, we have the line. Uh, no, I think something is wrong. You see that we have positions, positions, positions. Let's see if we start this correctly. We have push positions, positions. Ah, yeah, yeah, no, it's right, because everyone is going to have the positions there. And we have, yeah, 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 it's correct, it's correct. Okay. Well, now we have everything we need to generate the source map data, okay? The source map final string. So, what I'm gonna do here? I'm gonna call this generate source map data. And as we've done to our code on the minify, this is gonna be mutating the whole. Uh, uh, the whole search maps instance here, so we can do exactly what GitHub Copilot suggested here to return it as a string. Okay, actually, here we don't need the minified code, right? Because we have all the data from the minified code on the minified items, right? So I'm gonna go to the, the original code here, and I have the mappings for the original code. Nice. So first I'm going to get all the original items here. So from the name, but I'm going to get values and I'm going to let, let me get the a source map file just so you can take a look here. We're going to have sources, right? We have to put here. What is the minified file, right? So sources, we have the file here as well, but you can see that file is already here, right? We have set right on the constructor. All right. Let me check if we cannot save the source file here. No, source root only, skip validation. Yeah, no, it's not what I want. But I think this might work. We can have here source maps set content or set set source content. Ah, but we're going to need the original code. This is different. The source code we're going to have here is actually this array, right? So this is the full code we're going to have there. But yeah, never mind. It's going to be from here. So now, uh, source maps set source code content. And now we have the minified and we show the original code. Okay. Now, what we're going to have to do, we're going to iterate on all the keys, all the, the variables we have there, and we're going to try looking for this data on the minified items, get those positions and generate the whole thing for our search maps parser. OK, so original items dot for each. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to grab the minified positions 
for the same item, okay? And this must be there. And for each position we have, this is right, we're gonna try finding this data. Ooh. So here I'm gonna grab from the position, and here actually is the original position. Now I'm gonna put this on the map, cause mappings and mappings, just to make it easier to read. So we have the original, could be this one, and we need to get the generator, right? The generator is going to be the main five positions. Yeah, let's put in singular here. Main five positions is going to be our generator code. And the original is gonna be here. You can see that this key is not on the source maps, right? Because the source map generator is gonna do all the job of mapping those things to us. Okay? I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but let's see if Copilot is so good as it seems. Okay, it's missing just here. Now from this, it's missing. Actually, we are just adding the map in here. And probably now the source map string should have what we want. Let's just to console log this. Ooh, an error. Generator line one and nine, invalid mapping. Something that I noticed here, this is probably a bug but I think I can save this by removing a position. So I noticed all the time it was putting an additional item for the first line. So from the minified positions, I'm gonna put all in plural. So positions and the original positions, because it's an array, right? We have the line and column right there. From these positions, which is an array, I'm gonna remove one item. I'm gonna use shift. This is a work around because it's it's adding an additional position in the beginning. Let's let's make it work and then I show you if if this is the problem. Let's see. Probably this is not a problem. Uh, invalid mapping, generate is empty. Generate mean find positions. Let's check this out. What do you have here? Uh, -na -na. Where is it? Mean find positions, position line one, column nine. We have only one position. Let's see here, the original position. This position is going there, so probably this is right. Let's see. Invalid mapping. Oh, original position is undefined. So... Let's see what do you have on the original items. Original items, we have a new name and positions array, but probably we're gonna have to JSON string fi it. Positions line one column two, it's is all like to be okay. <laughs>
and here I'm gonna rename it for minified position so we can make the difference right so we have positions here and then we're gonna use this to get our index and actually the generator it's gonna be our generator will this work I'm not sure let's see let's check this out well we don't see any error here let's go back I'm not sure if I, I let any error here but the only thing was I was using positions where I should use minified positions right but let's see if this bug is happening that I told you yeah haven't seen any error let me put the console log back uh, mm, but names are not correct right the mappings are there but names are not because we didn't pass so <laughs> name it's gonna be new name now we go my friend see we have names all the variables the mappings generated by the the library the file sources it seems to be right and we didn't need the the work around here so i'm gonna remove it i'm not sure why i put this okay we're gonna go back to the processor and store this file in the disk and we can check if this works so source map we're gonna go there we have the content now we have the content what we have to do is just save in the disk right so we're gonna need the path and write this file there <laughs> it seems copilot knows even what i'm saying here it's crazy save it and let's check this out Ooh, but it seems it was to the wrong place but it's there right file is okay source contents are there mappings we have a bunch of encodings here names are okay too i think it's just the the path so i think here let's check oh we have the minified local path and we need okay we're gonna need this also to generate there so let's go there and i'm gonna put right here so the minified local path is what we're gonna use to generate the file and the file path is actually what goes here i think let's check <laughs> Okay, the minified local path is just index min js, right? We need the full path to save it on public. So we're gonna need here minified file path. So let's send it there. Oh, you were sending already. So let's see if it will work now. <laughs> it didn't work. And <laughs> yeah, I forgot to put it here let's check this out now there we go my friend if you go to the map now i'm gonna format this and we have the source maps here nice isn't it well how do we know if this is a valid file well we can check this article that has two different uh, uh source map validation here but I'm gonna access it from the link in case this this block just stop working in the future. So I'm gonna go directly to the source map visualization. I'm gonna go custom and I'm gonna select the generator file. Okay, just check if you are on the right file. So the generated one was the min.js. Now we have to provide a source map. So the source map is dot map. And now we can see there how do we know if this is working well if I put my mouse here you can see some is mapped to a Ooh. if I go to info if I go to name profession exactly the same thing something that you're gonna notice here is 
If I go to the message here, the message is all there, right? And also the console log for some reason didn't generate well. Why this console log? <laughs> So, I found that a bug. See that console is not here? It's because the declarations is all broken, right? It seems here all the identifiers are broken. So, what we have to change? Um, first, on the identifier hook, we don't have new name, right? Because the minified items here, I just set in the name map. So, it doesn't make sense. It's not saving the name here. Okay, so if we don't find this old name, we are returning and we are passing three different parameters here. But our declaration just received one. I think Copilot just misunderstood everything here. Okay, I'm gonna save it and run again. And now we're gonna see the error that I told you. Now I have the bug I told you. So now to fix this bug, I'm gonna use this minified positions shift okay just to remove remove the first line which is replicated okay if you take a look at this just a matter of curiosity for some reason it's replicating the first version so here so see the first line is replicated for all of them right so using shift, we're gonna just remove this first line because I don't know, for some reason there are a bug right there, okay? Uh, the first line of the minified of each position is replicated, okay? Just the first line, try running again and let's go back to the visualization and let's check this out. So I'm gonna get the the generator code, the source maps, and now my friends, we can see, see the message is here, the info is here, variables I, are there, it's all as we wanted to, okay? Well, the last thing we wanna do today is check if this is working on the browser, right? So I'm gonna upload out my browser and see now I can see my variables, right? But the names here are still EFG8. But if you click, let me move myself to the top here. If you click on map, now you can see exactly the same variables you define on the original source code. And now you can debug and see our age is 28. But the references, they are still from the minified code, just proving that we are executing this from the minified code, but the browser is actually uh, uh, reading it, okay? Nice, so you can see the last line is always the minified part, okay? Just one last thing, if you try running this on Chrome, if you try running this on the Chrome DevTools, we have a different behavior. I'm gonna update it here. Uh, we can see the source maps here. We can see the whole minified code. It says that the source maps were detected, but for some reason, the variable source maps are not working as expected. If we go here on the locals, we can see the variables. To make it work, we can also go on the here settings experiments and there is an option here to enable those variables so let's check this out here mine was already a checked resolve variables names in, in expressions using source maps this should work here but it's only working on firefox this is why we have a new proposal so all browsers can talk in the same language so if you are using chrome dev probably you, you're gonna see this problem here. But you see that uh, uh, debugging is still working. But if you move there, you can see 28, but only the scope here are not with the, the natural names, okay? But everything else is working as expected.
it. Oh, very nice, isn't it, my friend? Let me know here in the comments how is the energy and how was to create such a complex tool. All right? Learn advanced concepts by reproducing known technologies is the best way to learn, in my opinion. Today, you are able to analyze the JavaScript syntax tree, generate and compress files, create source maps, and even debug it on your browser. Show the results to your colleagues, and I'm sure they would be very impressed with what you've accomplished here. Please leave a comment on what we wanna see next on this channel and let me know what you thought about this class and what ideas you had about it. That's it for today. If you wanna see more content like this, keep an eye on the playlist on this channel as there are new content in Portuguese and in English every week. And of course, subscribe to the channel. I hope this content has exceeded your expectations. I'm Eric Wendell and I'll see you in the next video. Variable names, function names, and function parameter names in the same way big players such as Babel. We blah, blah, blah. Eu acho que eu falei duas vezes a mesma coisa ali, hein? Só dá uma checada na edição aí. Into just a few bytes. What about reproducing what webpack? <laughs> Variable definitions, function statements. Statements, é ótimo. And to be able to uh, imagine, you know, and even created a cloud a cloud coding. <laughs>